time. We're going to open up and start our 11 o'clock service devotion. Remember, this is not just our devotion, that is everybody. So y'all help us sing these songs and pray for us while we're up there praying. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's bring in the Holy Spirit in this place. We know he's already here, but let's let him know we're here too. Amen? Amen. Let's worship the Lord today in spirit and in truth. Amen? He said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his, pra- into his court with praise. So let's do that today. Amen? Amen. Amen. This morning when I rode, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. But this morning when I rode, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. But this morning when I rode, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. Because I know the Lord will take care of me. I know the Lord will provide for me, and I know he will lead and guide me all the way, all the way. Oh, this morning when I rode, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. Oh, this morning when I rode, yeah, I didn't have no doubt This morning when I got out of my bed I didn't have no doubt Cause I know the Lord will take care of me I know the Lord will provide for me And I know he will All the way, all the way Said I got up this morning to see a brand new day, and I didn't have no doubt. Said I got up this morning to see a brand new day, and I didn't have no doubt. Said I got up this morning to see a brand new day, and I didn't have no doubt. Cause I know the Lord. Will take care of me. I know the Lord will provide for me, and I know He will lead and guide me all the way, all the way. Said I got up this morning with the Holy Ghost, and I didn't have no doubt. Said I got up this morning with the Holy Ghost, and I didn't have no doubt. Said I got up this morning with the Holy Ghost, and I didn't have no doubt. Cause I know the Lord will take care of me. I know the Lord will provide for me. And I know he will. He will guide me all the way. This morning when I rode, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. But this morning when I rode, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. For this morning when I rode, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. Said I felt like running, felt like running. I felt like shouting, felt like shouting. I felt like singing, felt like singing. I felt like praying, felt like praying. Our Father. Father, God in heaven, God in heaven, I felt like praying, felt like praying, I felt like shouting, felt like shouting, I felt like shouting, felt like shouting. Oh, this morning when I rode, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. But this morning when I rode, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. For this morning when I rode, yeah, I didn't have no doubt. Cause I know the Lord will take care of me. I know the Lord will provide for me. And I know he will lead and guide me all the way. Amen, amen. Let's 
Let's continue to praise him. Yes, we keep continuing to praise him. Good morning. I will read you Psalms 91. dwell in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fire and from the noxious river. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shall I trust. His trust shall be my shield and block. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night by day, nor for the plagues that walk in the darkness, nor for the destruction that waste at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shall thee behold, and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. Thou shalt no evil befall thee, neither shall any foe come night by dwelling. But he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hand, lest thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lions and the elders and the young lions, and the dragon shall thou trample on the sea, because he hath set his love upon me. Therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. I have just read Psalm 91.
Will you guys join me as we go to the throne of grace? Lord God, we come before you this day, God. God, we thank you, God, for last night rest, Father God. God, we thank you that you raised this morning, God, in our right mind, Father God. God, we thank you for our life and our health and our strength, God. God, we thank you for those aches and those pains that we got out of the bed to let us know we're still among the living, God. God, most of all, we thank you for your grace, God. God, you didn't have to do it, Father God, but you did, Lord God. Thank you. God, you love us so much, God, even when we didn't love ourselves, Father God. And God, we just say thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Thank, thank you, you for another opportunity, Lord God, coming to the house of worship, Lord God, to lift you up in song, God, to live your, listen to your word, God, to praise you and magnify your holy name, Lord God. But God, let us not hold that word inside of us that you give us, God, but let us go out and be witnesses of you, God, telling them that you're still alive, God, and that you're not dead, God. Though times look so dreary, God, so many people are leaving this world, God. Father God, you are still in charge, Lord God. You still sit on high, looking down, God, taking care of our every need, Lord God. God, we just ask, God, that no one leaves this earth, God, without someone witnessing to them, God, telling them the goodness of your son, Jesus Christ, God, and that if they receive Jesus, God, that they're not dead, God, that they have eternal, key to eternal life, Lord God. And God, we just thank you, Lord God. God, let us be witnesses of you, God. Let us take the word out to this dying world, God. God, we might be the only Lord that some might see, Lord God. So let us get it right, Lord God. Let us study to show ourselves approved in your sight, Lord God. Let us be, be able to rightly divide the word of God, Lord God. God, fill us with your spirit, Lord God. Bless us in a mighty way, God. God, we just thank you, God. God, we ask you that you forgive us of our sins, Lord God. God, if we sin against anyone, God, let them forgive us, God. We forgive those, Father God, that have sinned against us, Lord God. God, in this service today, we just want to come to you, God, with a clean mind and a pure heart, Lord God. Yes. Let us nothing stop us from worshiping you today, God, in spirit and in truth, Lord God. Please, Lord. God, we ask you that you just have your way today, God. Have your way, God. Have your way today in this service, God, because we need you, God. We need you more and more each day, Father God. Yes. God, just bless us with your presence, yes, Lord God. God, God we lift up Daleville Christian Fellowship to you, God. Thank we lift up our pastor, God. Thank bless him and keep him, God. Keep him strengthened, God. Thank Find the hand of the enemy that might try to touch him, God. Yes. Keep his health strong, God, and his mind strong, yes, Lord God. Yes. That he might keep feeding us, God, that which you give him, God. Thank God, we ask you to bless his wife, God. Just help me, God. Bless her and keep her, God, that she might support him and support the body of Christ, God, and all that you assign to her, Lord God. God, we ask them bless, that, you, that you bless the members, God. You know each and every one of our needs, Lord God, and we know that you'll meet us at our need, God. And we're going to just keep trusting and believing in your word, Father God. And God, we love you and we praise you, Lord God. God, we lift up our sick and our shut into you today, God. Touch them in a mighty way, God. Strengthen them where they're weak, God. Heal them where they're sick, God. God, if they're lost, God, help them to find your son, Jesus, Lord God. God, we just thank you, God, and we praise you, God. And God, we thank you for your son, Jesus, God, the author and the finish of our faith, Lord God. We thank you that he went to Calvary's cross and he hung, bled, and died, God, for us, God. And that he rose on the third day with all power in his hands, Father God. And we thank you, God. God, we thank you for those who we know have gone on, Lord God, before us, God. Those who were witnesses in his body, God. So great a woman and a man, God, that's on, going on before us, God. Bless their families, God. Bless their loved ones, God. And, Lord, we thank you, and we give you honor, and we give you glory, and we give you praise. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Amen. I will be reading Psalms 117. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. All you nations. Praise him, all you people, for his mercy, kindness is great towards us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. I just read 117, first and second verse. God bless you. Amen. Just another day. There's a Bless 
just another day that the Lord has blessed me. He has blessed me from all, all people in my mind stayed on. Just another day that the Lord has helped me. I'm so glad. Oh, I'm so glad that the Lord has. choose to rejoice and be glad in it. As we call our call to worship, I ask you to do me a favor if you don't mind. Just look at your neighbor. Tell God thank you. Look at your feet. Tell God thank you. We have so much to be thankful for. And if you notice thanking him for that, nothing materialistic-wise have we thanked for. Because what God has done, he's blessed us with everything that you and I need. And I tell you, it's, he woke me up this morning. God, thank you. You allowed me to lay down and go to sleep last night. God, thank you. God, you allowed me to act into my lamb. God, thank you. God, you allowed me to come into the place of worship this morning. God, I thank you. Because God, you are my all serve a wonderful God today, a wonderful God today. I'm going to ask you to stand for our scripture reading. We honor our pastor today, Archbishop Paul McCone, our first lady on the Christine McCone. We honor you, we honor Almighty God for allowing us to have this opportunity. I'll read the worship leader part, and you'll read the congregation this morning. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. This is Mark 11, chapter 24, verse. Congregation. 
One more time. And now I'd like you to mean it. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. As you remain standing for the, as the choir sings, as we sing, our congregational song, please remain standing.
Good morning. Happy first Sunday. Come on, put those hands together. Did anybody come to praise the Lord this morning? Don't let the mask muzzle you this morning. I know it may muzzle you a little bit and you can't project your voice out, but still give God praise this morning. If you're able to stand up on your feet, come on, let's stand up. Shake off the weekend, whatever you did yesterday, whatever you did last night. Come on, let's give God his just due this morning. Hallelujah. Go to the prayer room. Hey. Come on in the room. Oh, come on in the room. Jesus, Jesus is my doctor. He writes out Write up all of my prescriptions. He gives me, gives me all of my medicine. In the prayer in the room. Prayer singing a little slower back in the day, but we just picked up the tempo. So come on and join us as we sing, and just know that you can get your answer in the prayer room. Oh, oh come on in the room. Oh, come on in the room. Jesus. Jesus is my doctor. He write out. Write up all of my prescriptions. The in Lord. the prayer room, in the prayer room, in the prayer room, in the prayer room, in the prayer room. Just get down on your in knees, the prayer room. get down on your in knees, the prayer room. and call on in the, the Lord. Prayer room. Call on in the, the Lord. Prayer room. You may have to call in the him room. late in the midnight in the hour. Room. You may have to call in the him prayer room. early in the morning, in the early in the morning, in the early in the morning. In the prayer room. Just call in. in the prayer room. Just call in. Just call it. 
anybody believe that? Do you believe it? Yes. Do you believe it? In the prayer room. 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 Good morning. God is so good. I stand before you to work on my first time worship. Do we have any first time worship? We will um, have to stand and give you a recognition. No first time worship? Well. Oh, okay. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming out to worship with us today. On behalf of our pastor, our teacher, Carl McCombs. Oh, no. 
So God, help us, Father God, to stand on your word, God. Lord, to know that you're the all-powerful and the almighty God. And Lord, there's nothing too hard for you, God, for you specializes in the impossible, Father God. And Lord, we thank you right now, Father God. And God, I want to send up a special prayer, God, for dark that smelly right now, God. Lord, you specializes in the impossible, Father God, right now, God. So God, touch right now, God. Move by your spirit right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And God, those that may be in this place, God, that may be feeling sick in their bodies, God. Lord, move, God, by your spirit, God. Lord, touch them, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God. Oh, God, there are some, Father God, Lord, don't know which way to go, God. Lord, but if you would lead and guide them, God, as they were looking to you, God, knowing that you would keep them on the right path, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. So, God, we just thank you today for the breath of life, God. We thank you, God, for this privilege and this opportunity, God, that we can come and stand in your presence, God. And, Lord, and offer up a prayer of thanksgiving, God. And yet at the same time, God, you said we can cast all our cares upon you, Father God, for you care for us, God. Now, God, we ask that you bless those that may be watching, God, by television or Facebook, God. God, go into their room, God. Go into their room, God. Go into their room and sit with them, God. Lord, whatever the situation may be, God, it's not too big for you, Father God. For you are God that specializes. For you are the bomb in Gideon. And Lord, we thank you for that right now, God. Now, God, move on us right now, God. Send the Holy Spirit right now, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Lord, that we may be able to worship you in spirit and truth, God. Lord, that we may be able to forget about all our cares and our concerns, God. And Lord, and give you the glory, God, that you deserve. So, Lord, we thank you right now, God. We praise you right now, God. Now, God, prepare our heart and our mind, God, to receive your word, Father God. Your word that will keep us, God. Your word that will strengthen us, God. Your word that will guide us, Father God. Your word that will encourage us, God. Your word, God, that will even bring correction to us, God. We thank you right now, God. And we give all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor belongs to you. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, that we do pray. Thank you now, God, for all your benefits, God, and all your blessings, Lord, and most of all, for your love. In Christ Jesus' name I do pray. Amen, amen, amen.
sing it, Jehovah. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah. Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name.
give you all the glory. Come on, put them hands together for the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Please be seated in the, in the presence of the Lord. I will, I will practice uh, social distancing so you won't, I won't be coming out there without my man. That's what, the, that's what McKinney was saying. But you know God is just good. I mean, when you begin to hear how good, what is that saying? That man cut that down. But you know God is just good. I, I, I mean, God is good. And, and it's, just, it's just important that we understand how good God is. I was sharing with uh, Dothan this morning. God said he was, he was ready to do a new thing. people wanted to remain in the same old place. <laughs> and he is desiring that we desire change. That, that we desire a better life. A better place to be. That our desire becomes what he wants for us. And I don't believe that you can ever read God where God wants something other than the best for you. And sometimes that best comes through trial and tribulation. Sometimes that best comes through the misuse and the abuse in life. But God will keep his word to us. He would do just what he said he would do. I want to ask one thing of you before I get started. Don't you allow this pandemic to stop you from celebrating Christmas. Don't you allow it to stop you from celebrating the goodness of God. There are means of us celebrating. We don't have to be in large groups to celebrate. I don't know about you, but I celebrate best, best by myself. Because don't nobody know like I know what God did for me. So when you see me clapping my hands and jumping, I got a right to it. And if you don't want to join me, that's left up to you. But I have a right to celebrate what God has done for me. And I'm saying to you, don't you let this thing shut you down and not allow you to celebrate. Amen. Go on in the back room somewhere and celebrate. Get in your car, drive out in the country somewhere, but celebrate. Don't let this thing shut you down. God, God wants you to live on. God wants you to continue to be blessed and know that you are blessed. Amen. So I want to just take a few minutes uh, Right. 
property. And that means that if the Lord blesses us with that, we'll have the, the block. And I want to turn that in to uh, a health and welfare ministry to deal with. Amen. I would love to take it from take it from down in the light to put it up on the road so people can have more access to it and that it can be a greater blessing. And I, I want you to be praying about that. And we're not we're not asking for nothing extra. We just want us to continue to pay our tithes and offerings. We can do it. We've done other things. We're just tithes and offerings. We can do that too. Amen. So I wanted to I wanted to share that. Ricky was going to donate to the uh, radio program. He was going to help us pay for the radio program. And, and if there's anybody else that, <clears throat> don't be turning your head, Miss Jane, I'm talking to you too. But I don't know, we, we have a radio program here, and uh, you follow, and it's doing a great work. And we just thank God that we're able to do that. Look at your neighbor and say, not finished yet. You couldn't convince me. Come on, say it like you mean it. Not finished yet. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. You know I want to sing, but I got to preach. In John chapter 20, verse 6 through 9, you'll find the these words. Please remain in the seat. I'm going to read and then we will go on. Then Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre and see it the linen cloth lie and the napkin that was about his head not lying with the linen cloth but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Not finished yet. Father, we thank you now and we bless you. Honor your name and give you glory and honor. Don't allow us to leave this place the same way that we come. Bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I was sitting once in, in the restaurant. And I was sitting at a table not far from a person who was eating catfish. And much to my surprise, just observing how they were working on that. And I wanted to learn how how to do that. You know, they would have it like this and they would go with it. But I always eat with my hand. I, I wanted to try it that way. And so I, I was just sitting there waiting and then all of a sudden uh, the person got up and when he, when, when he got up he just bones on the plate. And I guess they wonder, now, what is you going to do next with this? But much to my surprise, and, and I know some of you do this, that he was eating the, 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 the fried tail end of the catfish. And he's saying that that was the best part of it. He wasn't through yet. Come on now, stay with me now. That means that he said, don't mess with this. It's not over yet. Now when I get through with it, I will not lay the napkin side. I put it in in the plate. That lets you know what I'm through. And that 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 has taught me uh, a, a, a great lesson. When sometimes when you think it's over, it just ain't over. 
And I believe that that's one of the things that I believe that the Lord is teaching us is that, 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 that there are some who enjoy that part of the fish more so than they do the meaty part. To say to you that the Lord said sometimes there are some things that you ought to be enjoying that you're not enjoying uh, because of what it does for you. Who loves the weight in a line? But it should be teaching us patience. Oh yeah, who, who wants to be talked about, misused, and abused, but it teaches us to have patience with people that God is not through with them yet. So, so there are some things that, that happen in our lives that we sometimes misplace that we ought to be putting in place. God is speaking to us and wanting us to understand that wherever you are right now, that he is going to work a work in your life that it's not over. It's not over yet. And, and, and I want you to understand that the Lord will have us to look at people where they are. Not where we want them to be, but where they are. I was, I was, I was, I was praying and talking to the Lord about the, the, the circumstance, the church as a whole. And I said to the Lord, you said that if a sheep go astray, that we should go and find and bring that sheep back. I said, Lord, and I understand that. But Lord, am I to go after lazy folk? Am I to go after people that are unconcerned about their spiritual life? That they are more concerned about getting hair done and nails done? I'm saying it. then they are coming to worship. Surprisingly, he said yes. And I have fallen short in that because I personally felt that, hey, look, you should be coming. I understand that there are underlying conditions, but everybody don't have underlying. But what we have to come to understand is, is that God has been good to us. God has kept us and brought us through so many times when we thought ourselves that we wasn't going to make it. And when the Lord had shared that with me, I said, God, I'm going to do better. Because a soul is precious. A soul means more to God than anything else. And sometimes when we get in ourselves, we forget about that person just might need an encouraging word. Why am I saying that? Because I don't believe that they are finished yet. I believe that there is more going on in people's lives than they let out to be so. And one thing is for sure, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to finish this message, you can't help folk that don't want help. You cannot help people that will, I will not share with you. I'm your pastor. <laughs> I watch over your soul. And you should be talking to me just as well as I'm talking to you. 
but you want to hold me responsible for not doing my job and you not even trying to do yours. We are to hold one another responsible. These young men here should hold me accountable like I hold them accountable. The elders in this church should be holding me accountable as I hold them accountable. I guess you wonder where I'm going with this. Well, I'm going to the place where it ain't over yet. It's not over like a lot of people think that it's over. It's not over yet. Don't you play with this pandemic. If you don't hear anything, you leave your house, put that thing on called a mask. Don't you be going up in nowhere without your mask on. I don't care what the president and them other Republicans say. You put your mask on. You tell them the bishop said, I ain't scared of it. You put your mask on. Because there is more in common than just you. You have other folk that you are around that you ought to think about more than your ugly self. Oh yeah, I'm upset about this thing. How can you allow another man to tell you what you ought to be doing for your help when you know you need to be doing what you're doing? Now I'm through with that. I don't got that off of me. Now I'm gone. not finish yet. <laughs> Private lifestyle not finish yet. Talked about not finish yet. There's a lot of things that is not finished yet. But one thing that should not be finished is your walk with the Lord. It should be a continuation that every day that God will allow you to live and see, you ought to do just a little bit better. So here it was that the Lord began to teach us that we should never give up. For instance, some of the kids in school didn't do well. But tell them, don't take my place. <laughs> Friendships have kind of separated, but don't take my don't take my place. Because I'm not through yet. Judging me by my now. <laughs> Forgetting that you have a now too. It's not right. <laughs> but what I want you to grasp today is that never be finished. Don't allow anything to stop you. From doing that which you believe that you say that God told you to do. Don't you allow certain persons <laughs> to tell you what you should be doing when you know what you ought to be doing. Many of us have made some wrong turns in our lives, but look at us now. And that is because we were not through. Because we made a wrong turn. God was yet in control and yet in charge. And some of those wrong turns that we made, God stayed with us in the house. Lord help us today. And, 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 and because God stayed with us 
we are where we are today because of God staying with us. When the world counts us out, we need to tell the world, not yet. I'm not through yet. It looks like I'm through, but I'm not through yet. And see, as Christians, we rejoice in the fact that we are a work in progress. <laughs> that God is, is not through with me because I can throw up my hands and holler, praise God. Now see, that's not all the time that I feel that way. And in the event that you catch me in one of those times when I just don't feel that way, you're going to judge me now by what you just saw rather than completeness. So therefore, the Lord will have us to understand, come on Jesus, that we must convince ourselves that God is not through with me yet. Too many Christians are giving up and falling by the wayside because they made mistakes. Because they are not accepted by a society that don't even know who they are and want to tell you who you are. But you ought to know who you are before you try to tell somebody else who they are. Sunday school lesson said John did not try to steal Jesus' glory. John said, I'm just a voice crying in the wilderness. Make straight path. Make it straight because somebody's coming behind me. Who shoelaces, I'm not even worthy. The tie. And this, this is the point I want to make. You don't have to impress folk when you know who you are. You don't have to walk around like a peacock all of your life trying to make people think you somebody when you know who you are. And all you need to know that you've been born again, you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, that God has changed your life, that you are now a new creature in Christ Jesus. Don't worry about the bishop, don't worry about the missionary, don't worry about the deacon. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus, and that settles it. That's what God will have us to understand. Know who you are. Know where you're going and know how you're going to get there. And you don't have to worry about folks trying to prop you up. You don't have to worry about a jealous spirit. And these are the kind of things that is eating up the church. You mad because you can't sing like that one or can't preach like this one or teach like that. Do what you do. One thing I was taught when I was coming up, and I would never forget it, I'm an original. <laughs> I don't need to be like nobody else. I am a, what? an original. There ain't nobody else. Ain't nobody. <laughs> Mother said, you're right about that. I don't know if that's good. <laughs> you better keep that mask on, Lord. You better keep that mask on. See, what I want you to understand is, is that this life that we live should not be a life where we're in the cover. We all covered up. We don't want nobody to get to know. That our titles and our positions <laughs> has began to separate us as Christians. 
but we should not allow that to be so because what this word says to me is is that God is not through with me yet. And if, and if God is not through with me, then he's not through with you either. So somewhere along the line, if I see you making a wrong move or mistake, I should talk to you and help you rather than try to condemn you. Let me get into the lesson. So, so here the text. It focuses on what the disciples found when they arrived at the tomb. When they, when they got there on that resurrection morning, it tells us what they found. Jesus had been in the grave for three long days. Mm. And the word said, the dawn of the first day of the week, that Jesus, oh help us God, he rose from, from the dead. Now in him getting up, <laughs> the napkin was still in place. <laughs> that was Jesus. So I want you to understand that he's not through yet. What God has done is made it possible for us to become complete in him. That we will make some mistakes. That we will fall, but we have to learn how to get up. And we cannot allow pride to stand in our way to keep us from asking someone to help us. So therefore, the Lord will have us to understand how important it is that we respect one another. Not be jealous and envy of one another, but respect one another. If a young lady stands here or a young man stand here and declare the word, they are due the same respect that is due to me. They are not to be looked down upon or criticized because they can't say next. you will be surprised at the number of times I rewrote the Bible. I tell you what, if you don't believe you rewrite it, go and look to read the genealogy of Jesus. I want you to rewrite it. Those names are hard to and sometimes when we make a mistake, people laugh at us and make us feel that we are inadequate. But the church will not survive with a jealous spirit circulating through the pews, with an envious spirit circulating through the pews. It will not survive. The church has to love one another. In spite of what others may think, you have to love one another. And I know that there are folk, excuse me while I tell you, that are trying to set you against. They told a lie the other day that I had to mention. Before that, I'm just telling you how it is. Before that, I had COVID. But I want to send a warning. Touch not. I haven't done anything to anybody. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Excuse me, I stand in the position. And I'm, I've been quiet too long. When the Lord had shared this passage with me and letting me understand, 
I'm not through yet. You are a visionary. I give you things that I want you to give to the people. Go back to speaking in people's lives. Stop allowing folks to shut you down when I told you to do something. And what God is saying to us is, is that you are important to him. He needs you and I to open up and let somebody else see who we are. And then I, I, I want you to understand something here today. That Luke 24 and 12 says something about Peter's reaction when, 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 when he had went to Ephesus to the grave of Jesus. The Bible said that, that he, he got up. He arose. He got up from where, where he was. You can't go forward where you are until you get up. <laughs> then the Bible said he ran. We're not in a hurry for the Lord. The Bible said that, that he stooped. And he saw. That's just this is what the Bible said. And said that, that when he saw, he departed. He left. And, 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 and in his leave, Lord help us. He had a reaction hmm, that was one of what you would call excited faith. There are a lot of folk in numbers, but do the people have faith? Can you believe God for your miracle? Can you believe God for your healing? Can you believe God for your help? The church is large all over this United States of America in numbers, but do they have faith? There should be no one in the family of God that is worthy at a time like this knowing that God is on our side. And we are on God's side. I don't care what nobody said. Death is under control of God. <laughs> Death is under the control of of Almighty God. You want to know why? Because this passage said that Jesus was dead. That Jesus was dead, but Jesus rose from the dead. And that says to me that there is nothing impossible with God. Help me today, Jesus. So I want you to understand how important that we see that that folded napkin sent a message to the people lying in the same place <laughs> said that he's not through yet though he Though he rose, he's not through yet. It says, get ready for the comeback. See what God said? Saying, I'm giving you time to work some things out. My leaving that napkin in the place where it was says to you that I'm not through yet. Now, if it had been balled up, and throw it on the floor, you could have said I was through. But no, I left it in place for a reason to let you know I'm not through yet. I'm talking to somebody. God said, I'm not through with you. People done counted you out, but I'm not through with you. People done said all kind of evil things about you, but I'm not through with you. Folks can get through with you, but when God said he's not through with you, you don't have nothing to worry about. People will ball you up, throw you away, and they 
they think it's over. But in the midnight hour. He grabbed him. Now watch this now. He just only grabbed him. He started <laughs> fashioning you. Start. <laughs> See, I know they thought you. I'm going to finish in just a minute. <laughs> Who else? Who else? Is that? Come on, So here it was that the Lord wanted them to understand I'm not through yet. That you see that I'm not in the grave and you going to count me out. But he says I'm not through yet. See, the resurrection was not, not all. He was not through yet. He, he left and, and went and had a seat on the right hand of the Father and continued to make intercessions for you and I. So therefore, when Jesus rose from the grave, he was, he was not, he was not through. <laughs> I want you to leave here today knowing that God is not through with you yet. That you have maybe fallen short, but he's not through with you. I know that when we look at our situation today, God has given us the same abilities in the church that he gave to to his disciples. He said he wanted us to go out <clears throat> into the hedges and the highways and compel men and women to come to him. And sometimes you're going to find somebody that's not like you want them to be. They may not even look like you want them to look. But he said, bring them to me because I'm not through yet. <laughs> what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you time 
to get some things right. And the Lord saying to us, there are some people yet still wrestling with some spirits in your life. But the Lord said, I'm not through yet. The Lord wants us to understand that I have, listen to me, chosen you. And I have equipped And I want you to tell men and women, boys and girls alike, about who I am. The Lord said, I'm, I'm ready to heal some painful, broken hearts. I'm ready to do some things in your life. I'm ready to replace some of those things that you thought was blunders was me just at work in your life. And I want you to leave here today knowing that every time I, I think about mm, that folded napkin I think about how, how people will try to count us out. Y'all that y'all tell the truth. Every time I think about that folded napkin, I start thinking about how people will try to turn you against one another. But I want you to understand that sometimes. I'm on my way out of here now. Sometime I, I run and I get a little weary. But God ain't through with me yet. Sometime. Sometime I, I get lost and I can't find my way. But don't take my place. Please don't, don't take my plate because I'm not finished yet. Sometimes I get frustrated and feel all by myself. But please don't take my plate. I'm not through yet. What I believe that the Lord is saying to us, and many of us during this pandemic, we feel like we are defeated. We feel like we have lost out on life because we are not able to come together like we should. But praise God that you're able to come to worship. Praise God that you have come to worship the Lord. And through your worshiping the Lord, God is going to open some new doors for you. God is going to do a new thing in your life because I heard the songwriter when it said, please be patient with me because God is not through with me yet. And I hear Jesus as he sits there <clears throat> on the right hand of the Father. And I hear the Lord saying that when I, when I rode into Jerusalem on the back of that donkey and they were laying palm branches down in the way, calling Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. He said, I want you to know that I wasn't finished yet. He said, when I went in the judgment hall and they found me, they found me guilty. 
of a crime that I did not commit. But I wanted them to know that I was not through yet. When they put me in the prison system and I did not say a mumbling word when they brought me before Pilate, I was letting them know that I'm not through yet. And when they began to take me from Judgment Hall to Judgment Hall, I wanted them to know that I'm not through yet. Don't take my plate because I'm not finished uh, with the work that my father has sent me to do. And uh, when they took me and they found me guilty and they nailed me to the cross uh, and they made fun of me, I, I didn't say a mumbling word because I knew that my father was not through with me yet. Don't take my plate because I'm not finished with the work that my father has sent me to do. I'm trying to tell somebody today, uh, I don't care how bad it look, uh, how bad it is, uh, the Lord is sending you a message and letting you know that, that he is not through with you yet. Uh, so he said, tell uh, them people, don't take your plate uh, because you still uh, got some things that you need to do. Uh, I want to tell somebody here today that you may have a loved one that is sick, uh, but don't you take their plate uh, because God is still uh, a healer. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, somebody he is in a, a great need today and somebody done told you that you're not going to make it but I want to tell you that he's still Jehovah Jireh he can make a way out of no way <laughs> can I get a witness him I come to tell you today that don't break your plate don't take it off the table because God is not through with you Good God, am I, I know somebody told you that you are not going to do, you're not going to be, but don't take your plate, don't break your plate, because God is not through with you yet. But I heard you say that I'm not even saved, but God still ain't through with you yet, because he wants you saved, he wants you sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost to do his work. I'm on my way to my seat, but I heard Jesus when he said, don't take my plate. I'm not through yet. He died on that cross. But I hear Jesus saying, don't take my plate because I'm not through yet. And they put him in that bar of tomb and they thought, it was over, but I heard Jesus said, don't take my plate yet. Good God Almighty, I'm not through yet. I'm trying to tell somebody, you may be sick, but God's not through. You may be in trouble, but God is not through. I wish you'd tell somebody, God is not through. Good God Almighty, he's not through. God said, don't move your plate. Don't break your plate. Just keep your plate where you got him. They said it was all over when Jesus died on the cross. They put him in the bar of tomb. The first night, they said it's over. The second night, they said it was over. Good God Almighty. The third night, they said it was over. But early. Good God Almighty, yeah, early, Woo. good God Almighty, I heard Jesus, don't move my plate, good God Almighty, I am, I am getting up out of the grave, when I get up, 
I'm going home to be with the Father. I'm going to sit down by the Father's right hand, and I'm not through yet. I'm going to make intercessions for you, for you, for you, and for you. Somebody here today need to know that God is on your side. You need to know, don't break your plate. Don't take your plate off of the table. I heard Jesus when he said, there's plenty of room still at the table. Don't break your plate. There's peace at the table. There's love at the table. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? I heard Jesus, don't you give up. There's joy, unspeakable joy, just waiting for you. Don't you remove your plate. Stay right there. Wait on me. They that wait on the Lord, he shall renew their strength. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Anybody here done tried him? I dare you to say, yeah. I dare you to say, yeah. God.
God is not finished yet. We ask you now to prepare your hearts and minds for our communion. As I think it's prepared for uh, when God gets through with me, I shall, I shall come forth. I shall come forth. I shall come forth. This miracle. One more time, please. Please be patient with me. God, God is not through with me yet. Please, please be patient with me. God, God is not through with me yet. And oh. 